All right, so what we're working on today is the Sony SL5000 series uh, front-loading Betamax. Uh, it has a common issue that a lot of these machines have. Um, I haven't seen it on the top-loading machines from this, uh, from just before these machines, which would be the 5400, 5, 5600, 5800. I haven't seen it too much in those. I'm sure it can exist because it uses the same problem parts, but it's not nearly as common from my experience as it is with these uh, front loadings, early front loading units. Um, and in America, I haven't seen a whole lot of beta machines, I mean, but this style, uh, 5000, like the 5200, uh, the original 5000, um, the 51, so 5101 is the other one, this is a 5010, um, but anyway, down to the point. Um, so what happens with these is they use um, some light blue Sanyo capacitors. I forget exactly what the makeup of those parts were. They were great when they were new, uh, but they quickly fell out of tolerance and start developing problems in the capstan and drum servos. And this is what will happen. Put it in. i got to help this machine thread because it... Oh, nope, didn't make it. It'll automatically eject if it doesn't thread in a certain amount of time. There we go, all right. So, press play. I don't have the sound hooked up. But that's what you'll get, just a bunch of gobbledygook garbage. Um, the sound will waver in speed and you'll kind of see that there's something going on, but it's just a bunch of snow. And if you listen really close, you can hear the servo hunting. See, it doesn't lock to a certain pitch. You can kind of hear it going wah, 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 wah. Well, that's a sure sign that you got the typical capacitor problem that these things have. And I'm not gonna say recap the entire unit. That's pretty, it's, I wouldn't do that. Um, but I will show you where the capacitors are that cause the problems on these units. And they're known problem capacitors, and nobody likes them, and for good reason. And we're going to replace them and uh, adjust this thing so it works again. Well, excuse the mess, but the first step here is to, of course, take off the bottom panel. Now, the uh, there's two boards here, and the board we want is opposite the cassette compartment. So it's up here. All right, so we've got the back, or the bottom off, excuse me. So this board here, your capstan servo is list is labeled right here. And I think your drum servo is over in this general area. Um, so what you're gonna have to do to get this board out, you've got three screws here, and then there's four little retaining clips, or excuse me, three retaining clips up top. But the problem is your tracking control knob over here is gonna get stuck. So you actually have to take the front panel off. So I believe there's three screws on the top side of the front panel, and then it actually will hinge off. There, there are little, uh, uh, not snaps, but little uh, um, pieces. There's three, I think, here, and the front will actually hinge off and come off entirely. So take that off, and then we'll flop the board down. Yeah, so here are the screws to take the front panel off. You have a screw here, a screw here, and a screw here. When you take these off, there's little metal pieces, they're reinforcements. Uh, don't lose those, and when you put these back on, do not over-tighten them, because you'll bust the plastic. All right, screws are removed, the top ones, and now it should just, kind of hard to do with one hand, but it should just come right off. Whoop, and then you bash the counter with it. Anyway, <laughs> now we'll go back to the bottom. All right, so here's the board folded down. And these are what we're gonna have to replace. So all of these light blue Sanyo capacitors, they're all very, very low value. Um, for instance, this one's 0.33 microfarad. Um, the one next to it I think is also 0.33, 0.47. Uh, there's some 0.1s, 0.47s, 0.68. So basically you're gonna have to make a little chart because I think every machine is different in the 5000 series. I can't remember. I finally wrote them down and I, I, <laughs> I haven't been in one in a while to remember if they're all the same values or not. But anyway, the ones that I go with um, are actually these, uh, 
if I could focus on that or not here. Uh, not really. There we go. Maybe. These are Nishikon uh, UKL series. Um, anyway, that's a 0.4750. They're all going to be 50 volts, which is fine because all the uh, Sanyo capacitors in here are 16. So as long as you're a little high on, if you're a little high on voltage, it doesn't matter. Uh, but you want to get the same value uh, capacitance. Um, so anyway, so we are now going to take all these blue capacitors and uh, all these Sanyos, and I'm going to pull them out and put in the Nishikon replacements. And then we'll go through how to adjust it to get everything right. So you're going to need for that um, three different tapes. Um, you're going to need a uh, three different speeds. So you're going to need a beta one speed tape if you want to do that speed, um, and a two and a three in order to adjust these controls here, which is the capstan free speed adjustments. So I'll set up a tripod and everything once I get those capacitors in, and I'll show you what it looks like when we're adjusting it on this TV. So stay tuned. All right, so we've got the new capacitors soldered in. Here's all the, uh, the originals here. Quite a few of them. You can actually get the uh, new capacitors from, uh, I, I use either digikey.com or mauser.com. And again, they're, they're Nichicon brand uh, UKL series capacitors. And you're probably only going to find them in 50 volt at this point. Um, I'm not sure if they ever offered lower values. I, I'd like to think I ordered lower values years ago, but only the 50s are available now. Anyway, let me hook this back up and we'll see what we get from this point. Okay, so I've done nothing as far as these adjustments are concerned. Only the capacitors are replaced. You saw what we had before, just a bunch of junk and snow on the screen. So now we're going to turn this on. And then I've got a tape in it. Now the tape in it is a beta 2 speed tape. It's the one I had in it before. So we'll hit play here. All right, well, we're getting there. So that looks a lot better. Um, still sounds terrible. And there's obviously a, a, an issue with the servo still. And that's where the adjustment comes in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the proper speed, uh, capstan f uh, free speed adjustment. And that, let's see, it'll say 2H cap, it's that black trimmer right in the center. So I'm going to take a tweaker tool here. It's hard to do this with one hand. And I'm just going to, if I can grab it, which I can't. Hold on a second. Alright, so I'm going to cheat here and just use a darn screwdriver, which you'll see as I start to turn it, it'll clear up. I'm turning it clockwise. You'll see the uh, snow change consistency here. There we go. Yeah, it looks a little more watchable. You see the music is actually at the proper speed now once I get started here. Sorry if you don't like Asia, it's just my test tape. Okay. So that's a beta 2 tape. And our tracking control is centered. So if I bring it to the left... Huh, it's actually pretty good. Just the tracking control. So you want to watch this for a little bit because it can drift a little bit and you want to just make sure the adjustment stays. You might even try a few tapes at each different speed. All right, now we're going to try a beta 3 tape. Just wanted to mention there's also a drum free speed back here. Um, and I've seen on some other machines that that kind of gets out of whack. Um, and if that is, is off, now it's not off on this machine, but if it is, you'll see a bunch of diagonal streaks, kind of like this. So that's the drum 
being affected, so I'm going to bring that slowly back to where it was. And you'll see as you move it, it kind of shifts left and right. That looks about decent right there. All right. Another side note um, while we're in here, if you have some deoxit spray, it's probably a good idea to hit some of these switches. For instance, this switch right here on this board we're working on, that's your record speed switch and your beta one speed playback switch. It's a good idea to probably shoot some cleaner in here and work the switch back and forth. And also you can very easily pop this, this tracking control knob off and it's just a standard old potentiometer. You can work some cleaner into this too and, and work the control back and forth so you get a good, uh, good contact in your tracking control. Just something else to do while it's open. And another thing, I could show you that it's a problem on this one. There is a PCM caption switch. It's right down here by the AV controls. Um, it's dirty <laughs> and I'll show you what it does. It's a kind of annoy an annoying, uh, a little bit of an annoyance, um, but even if I just wiggle it, I'm not even changing the switch, but you can see here what it does to the picture. So I guess I am moving it now. I've moved it a little bit, it probably cleaned itself up. But you can see all the crap it adds. That's because the switch is dirty. So you might chase your tail troubleshooting something else and it's just a dirty switch on the back. Um, another switch you can hit is on this board down here. Where is that? Huh. Maybe it doesn't have it on this one. There was a camera switch somewhere. Nope, never mind. I'm thinking of another model. Remember there's a camera pause switch I thought on the front somewhere, but I think that's on the other model. Looks like there's even actually a place for it, but this doesn't have a camera input, that's why. Some of them have a camera switch here. If it has a uh, K connector for an old Sony camera, um, that switch can get dirty too and cause the issues. And if your tuner isn't working, make sure you check that it's not on camera mode. I've done that a few times myself. <laughs> so let's get a Beta 3 tape and we'll adjust that speed next. Well, I'm full of it. This is actually a Beta 1 tape next. Now, Beta 1 will not play right on these machines unless you come back here and switch it. There's a switch back here. I'm not sure where we're at in this tape. But even with this, I can bring it back. Maybe. Hmm. Still out of whack. Let me get this thing for a while into some picture. All right, there we go. By the way, I have to thank Ray, Ray Glasser for this tape. I didn't actually have a Beta 1 tape to test any of these things with. I'm gonna actually turn the volume down so I don't get flagged on YouTube here. All right, this is the Beta 1 adjustment. the wrong way let's see it should slow down and then stop and you have to wait a second to make sure it's not gonna do it to you anymore yeah, it's pretty good all right now for the sake of time I'll move on to a beta 3 speed tape Right, beta three. Yep, looks terrible. Now don't forget to change your uh, playback speed switch uh, back from beta one to the other position here. And then we're gonna go to the three speed, beta three speed capstan free adjustment. And this can be kind of touchy because it's such a slow speed here. Very, very picky where it wants to be. Now we're over, I think, the line here. Could also be that these trimmers are so very uh, 
old and flaky, you can work them back and forth a little bit. Might help you get the adjustment in better. Boy, is that finicky. That might be it. Now that flickering line going up the screen is actually uh, not part of the problem. That's just the refresh rate of the TV and the phone I'm recording this on acting up. Man, is that picky. Now since I recorded this on another machine, there might be a slight interchange issue. I mean, my tracking, I haven't even adjusted the tracking at all since we started this video. Um, but just touching the tracking a little bit might help us out here. Nah, we still need to adjust that. See those those bars coming into the screen show that the servo is still not quite right. So I'm just gonna keep adjusting it here. Just the tiniest little increments. Oh, nope. it's gonna do it that way. Well, you get the idea. <laughs> it's a really picky adjustment at, at such a slow speed. And I may have a trimmer here that's kind of flaky too, so I may clean it and try it again. Getting close, but I'm not happy with that. So that's better, but it's still a little far off because you can see every 10 seconds or so, you got that roll Wait for it. Yeah, see, it's still not quite right. So you really have to, you really have to play with the slower speeds and it's a pain in the butt. Um, but you can get there eventually. And also, um, if you can't get it completely perfect, I just try and get the uh, that rolling to go away. And then, I mean, the tracking control is rarely ever going to be centered, especially at the slower speeds on tapes made on other VCRs. They're just, it's just too, too tight a tolerance to match from one VCR to the next with speeds that low. So um, I did notice that if I, if I give it a tweak right back to where it was prior, um, I can get it right in the middle, but then you'll start to get some snow on the bottom like that. So you can get it just to the bleeding edge of that and then it starts to act up again and roll. So at that point your tracking control is going to be <laughs> pretty much what's going to happen here. And this is not a professional test tape. This is something I recorded. So right there you're going to start to get some snow kind of normal and then I'm just literally going to bump this right up like this. And there you go. So now that flickering, of course, if it if it's going to be in the final video, is just the uh, just the the phone. So there you go. Nice stable picture. Oop! What that was. Sounds okay. And I'll sit here and watch this to make sure it doesn't keep acting up, but uh, just a lot of little playing with it. And then I would go back once you get them all done and uh, just go back through and try the other speed tapes again, make sure they're all still good. Um, some of these settings might affect each other a little bit. So, so that's about it for the SL5000 series front loaders. Um, that should take care of your issue, provided you don't have any other problems like a bad pinch roller, or bad belt, or, you know just other issues. But uh, first thing I would do before tackling this is to um, give the entire tape path a good cleaning. And I'll make a video on how to do that on these machines too, because I don't think there is one. Um, and we'll go from there. So I hope that's some help. I'll see you next time.